All right, a lot of uh, 80s mixers and probably even other eras had these just uh, standard faders. I'm pretty sure these were made by Alps. Yep. It says so right there. So nothing wrong with these. Um, they're not maybe as smooth as some of the more expensive faders, but they, they get the job done. Uh, that one downside is because they sit like this, the dirt, you know, and dust eventually does get through this gasket here, and it will settle right on the, the element, and that can cause a problem for keeping things clean. And so um, I figured out or explored how to get these things open and get them cleaned up real good, and so I'm going to share that with you. Now, first of all, if you want to clean the outside, window cleaner um, works just great. You can wipe all this stuff down, get the crud off of there, give that kind of a fresh start. Okay, the other things that I'm using here, we've got a, just a pair of needle nose pliers. That's probably the easiest way to get these things apart. And what you want to do so that um, you kind of protect what you got there is you want to take your needle nose pliers and just wrap one of the jaws with, I just, I just use electrical tape and use any vinyl tape. You experiment with different things if you want, but I found this works pretty good because it's easy to get back off your pliers. It doesn't mar the finish and has a little bit of grip to it. These, uh, you can see these things are held together by these little metal tabs. So, easy enough, we just go in there and bend those tabs up, and you can see here why we've got the tape on the pliers. We just take and bend those, each one of them. And you want to be gentle, and it's okay. It's possible that you might break one of these tabs. They can only be bent so many times before they come apart. And honestly, I can't remember if I've already had this fader apart. So, um, you know, one or two of them is probably just, just fine. Now, what you want to do when you get this opened up is um, note which way things are pointing so you get them back in the right way because you're going to take the element off and then you're going to see in there I call this the carriage it holds the wiper this is the wiper here it's the metal the metal contacts little filaments that go up and down your um, your resistive element we just call this the element and so I'm just making note here that I know this is the bottom of the fader because I can see that the gasket is open more so it's spent most of its life down at infinity. So I'm just going to remember that the wiper um, filaments point toward the bottom of the fader. And then uh, we just lift that out. And you can uh, you can clean this up in here if you want. You can wipe it down. You can put uh, just a little bit of grease in there if you want, a little fader grease to help it track more smoothly. Um, gives you full access to clean things up. You can you know clean up the wiper again. I just I use a cloth with a little window cleaner on it. You just want to be careful as you're working that you don't bend your wiper. So as you work your cloth and do your cleaning, just be wary of that. Now, the main reason we're in here is to clean up our our element though, so let's get to that. Now, I use a product by Keg Labs called Deoxit Fader Lube F5. This is different than the D5, which is something you'd use for 
metal to metal contacts, jack surfaces, switch contacts, um, uh, metal connectors. This cleans, it lubricates, and protects, and actually helps it to conduct better. But because it has lubricating qualities, we don't want to use this in our switches and in our other contacts. This is good for these carbon type or conductive plastic faders. And uh, just going to hose that down. And then what I use is just an old toothbrush. And gently get in there and wipe a little bit. You can even apply some of that cleaner to the toothbrush itself. And just gently, gently, gently. And then uh, we'll give it a little hosing down. And we can maybe dab the excess off of there. And having a can of air around is really nice for getting the stuff out of there. That's looking much better already. We got the junk off of there. Clear off the stuff from the other side. The other thing I'm going to do, I've, I've found sometimes I've had to go back in and uh, because we're not getting good contact on these I think over the years they do tend to after being under all that pressure all that time so it's okay in my book to just lift them up a little bit and make sure that we have good contact you don't want to do too much because we don't want to put excess wear on our resistive element either but uh, I think a little bit doesn't hurt because I've had problems where I'm getting inter intermittent connectivity because there's just not enough good contact there. Now for our elements, same thing. I just hose that sucker down and you can use some of these uh, cotton makeup remover pads. These work great for cleaning heads and things too. Of course using the appropriate cleaner. But look at look at what came off of that. So that's the stuff that gets in the way of audio coming through well. I've just sprayed cleaner right on this pad and we can just wipe. Look at that. We want to be gentle but we're we're getting it cleaned off here so we can get in there a little bit. That's looking much better. And uh, typically what I'll do is just wipe up the excess. And if it looks like it's too dry, I'll put a little, little bit on one of these and just give it another wiping down. It'll dry off on there, but it'll leave behind that lubricant. And we want that there because it protects and keeps things gliding well so and then reassembly is the reverse of removal again you know this is desoldered right now but you could conceivably do this with it still soldered if it's a hardwire connection you know if it doesn't plug into its channel card or whatever um, there's no reason that you can't um, do this with it still connected up so what did I say? My wiper was pointing toward the bottom. I'll put it back in that way. And here's the other nice thing. These, these typically will only go in one way. I'm looking at this one. This might not be that way. Yeah. See there's a wider shoulder on this tab. That'll only go in one spot, so you don't have to worry about the element going in the wrong way on these. It'll only go back in one way, or at least easily. But that's keyed right there. It'll only go in in that spot. And then, same thing. Only now we're going to kind of put it on the top, apply some pressure, and just rock it over. Yeah, there goes one of those tabs. I have had this one open before. I think I actually opened it up to look and see which way the thing was facing. Because I didn't make note of it. 
when I opened it up. So we lost two of those tabs, but really that should be fine because there's not a lot of pressure on this. And there we go. Ready for action.